or you and your children doing it. There may be an easier way. Plus, they're keeping their eyes on outer space and your backyard free of missiles. Meet the airmen living in Greenland. The AFN Evening News starts now. Saddam Hussein refuses to show up for court. Hello, I'm Army Sergeant Shannon Wright. We'll have more on this story in just a minute, but first... U.S. and Romanian troops are working together in Afghanistan in a small village in the Kandahar province. That's where Afghan people are suffering in need of medical help. Army Sergeant Justin Wilson reports. On tap for the joint force was an air insertion. Search of the area 50 kilometers south of Kandahar and, switching gears a little, a visit to a local village. It went a long way in setting up the Romanians for future success. I think it's a huge confidence builder for the Romanian forces, um, frankly, I think they really wanted to get out and try to, to show that they are a, uh, an established fighting force and that they can do their part as part of the coalition. So it was really, really important to those guys, too, to be out here. The Romanians interacted with the locals, who were very receptive to their guests. It's important because they will be doing missions like this without help from the U.S. at some point. In order for us to transition smoothly between the U.S. forces leaving here whenever that day comes, we need to try and establish a groundwork for the other coalition members to follow on uh, in our absence after we depart to assist in the rebuilding of this area. The village visit armed the coalition with vital facts so the Romanians can provide better assistance later on. From Kandahar, Afghanistan, I'm Army Sergeant Justin Wilson, AFN News. U.S. and Romanian troops talk to the locals about their needs. We'll take you inside their meeting tomorrow night. In Iraq, officials say Saddam Hussein is refusing to appear before the court. Lawyers for the ousted dictator are meeting with the judges to try and resolve some procedural issues. Saddam says he considers the court unjust and will not return. Here's the latest news in the war on terror. Gunmen kill three Iraqi police officers in a hospital in Kirkuk, freeing a man arrested for plotting to kill a judge in the Saddam Hussein trial. The American general in charge of training Iraqi troops says the new Iraqi government may want the U.S. out of Iraq soon, as early as the middle of next year. The general says that would be a disaster. Al-Qaeda's second in command claims Osama bin Laden is alive and well. Officials have not yet verified the authenticity of the tape carrying the message, but believe it is an effort to dispel rumors of the terrorist leader's death. Al-Qaeda in Iraq claims responsibility for yesterday's deadly suicide bombings in Baghdad. An attack on the police academy killed at least 43 people and wounded 73 others. A cafe attack killed three more. An Iraqi police captain says all of the casualties were officers or students at the academy. It's the deadliest attack against Iraqi forces since February. Tonight, we talk your health. Every Wednesday, we set aside a few minutes to take an in-depth look at issues directly affecting you. Michelle Michael joins us now with tips on how to take the emptiness out of holiday deployments. Dealing with deployments during the holidays, not an easy thing to do, and certainly one that involves a certain state of mind to make it through this time of the year. Joining us to talk about that is Lieutenant Colonel Gary Southwell. Colonel, thanks so much for being with us. You're a psychology consultant for Europe Regional Medical Command. Um, we have so many soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan, so does this affect a lot of families in this area? It, it really does. During this Christmas time, uh, during the holiday season, there's, um, in our culture, there's so much uh, emphasis on family and on tradition and on sharing the holidays with people that are close to you. And for us who are deployed um, overseas or who are stationed overseas, uh, it's really um, a mixed bag because oftentimes we're separated from our family at this time. Um, we, uh, we may have a sense of loneliness or we may feel like um, we, uh, we don't have the opportunity to share this celebration with our families or with people that are, that are close to us. And so we really, um, in some ways, we have to make an effort to, in fact, uh, overcome some of these feelings of, of loneliness. We might find ourselves feeling depressed or irritable or even just kind of generally ticked off and angry about this whole situation and things that aren't necessarily in our control. Um, and well, so... I'm when you say we need to make an effort, uh, what exactly do you mean by that? How do these families make an effort to overcome these things? What do, what do you suggest? Well, because people tend to be kind of feeling down or moody or um, 
just not very motivated. Sometimes it's difficult to want to get out and try to do things to make yourself feel better. And so there's an effort involved. But within psychology, within psychology theory, there's behavioral activation theory where sometimes you just have to go out and do some things in order to kind of drag your feelings along with you. And so there's a sense that it's up to us to kind of motivate ourselves to begin to, um, to engage in activities that are healthy and that uh, really help us and our families to feel better about what's going on around us. When, when you are without a loved one during this time of the year, is it most difficult to get out and, and join the community in some of these activities that, you know, families can do on bases and so forth? Well, it's very difficult sometimes to motivate ourselves, but there are so many opportunities to participate in activities, and sometimes we just have to um, kind of look, look for opportunities to reach out, to volunteer, to, um, to invite people over, to engage in um, other kinds of... Uh, <coughs> Um, charitable activities that I think would be very helpful for people basically to begin to create our own traditions or create new traditions in our family because so much of the holidays are based on family traditions and to to begin to recreate some of that is very helpful and actually begins to generate some of the positive feelings that are surrounding Christmas and the holidays and that's a look at your health this Wednesday Colonel Southwell happy holidays to you and your family thank you you too with the increased number of deployments, families are turning to different sources, seeking help dealing with the absence of a loved one. Army Sergeant Kerry James reports a special group in Heidelberg, Germany is geared toward your children. Who would like to start first? Students who have a deployed parent at the Patrick Henry Village Elementary School visit with a counselor once a week to talk like to in a classroom setting known yeah. as deployment group. And everybody please give your attention to Jacob. Um, we focus on how they're feeling about deployment. Um, th it's important for them to find out as much information as they can. This information includes looking at maps and globes to figure out just where the child's parent is. During group, the students talk about things such as how they are coping with anxiety and dealing with various issues. Some kids deal with the issues rather well, some do not. Their grades are going down. It's hard for them to concentrate. They're just stressed. These are the ones the deployment group focuses on. They want these young students to know that they are not alone. They find that there are commonalities. There are other students who are going through the same kinds of things. A lot of time is spent on helping the students understand that. We try to make the children feel comfortable and at ease, and I think that's really good for them. What does Johnson hope the children take away from the group sessions? We get a sense of resilience that, okay, I've handled this. I can handle most anything that comes up. Army Sergeant Kerry James, AFN News. There's an official government website you can also turn to. The address is deploymentlink.osd.mil. Just click on the Current Deployments tab and then Family Support. Here's a group of airmen who aren't deployed, but they are a long way from home. They're 700 miles north of the Arctic Circle. They say it's easier to watch for missiles up there. Tech Sergeant John, Som John Somheil has the story. Thule stands watch over North America. Originally, Thule's job was to find and stop Soviet bombers before they could reach Canada or the U.S. Then, intercontinental ballistic missiles moved nuclear weapons and Thule's mission into space. The site was originally stood up in the 60s when the Cold War was not so cold um, to detect and get the earliest warning of any inbound missiles over the pole. You want to go as high up as you can, if you will. Um, Thule was seen as an ideal spot. Thule's 12th Space Warning Squadron stands vigil over the North Pole. They can see everything that goes over the pole thousands of kilometers above the Earth. Through the decades, space has grown crowded, and Thule's mission has expanded. Today, the base not only watches for missiles, but also tracks most every object over the poles. You know, space is a busy place. Um, in any battlefield, um, your warfighter wants to know what is going on in their space. Uh, unfortunately, unlike a battlefield, we don't have eyes on on all of our objects in space. Objects that could threaten American satellites, the International Space Station, or even a shuttle. Tech Sergeant John Somhow, Thule Air Base, Greenland. Coming up, almost everything you need to know about safety and Livorno High School shuts its doors for good soon. Parents and kids face troubles with the transition.
As soldiers serving overseas, you are making a difference for our country and for our global community. The Combined Federal Campaign Overseas offers us another way to make a difference. Through your donations, you touch the lives of people in need. Make a world of difference today. Join me in supporting the CFC by making your pledge. You are truly the next greatest generation, and I thank you for your service. My position is Chief Legal Assistance Officer, and I'm stationed with the Joint Task Force, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. I serve in the United States Army and the U.S. military because of patriotism. I uh, enjoy helping soldiers and service members, and it's the best job in the world. I'm a lawyer, a JAG officer, and I wanted to be a lawyer since I was uh, age 15. I just enjoy helping people, and uh, that's what I spent my career doing. I became an officer because of the challenge it represented to me and the responsibility that was given to me early on. I want to thank everybody here in, in JTF and especially in the SJA office for some of my best memories of a junior attorney as a junior officer of working directly with troops and soldiers and sailors and I get to do that once again and I absolutely love it and I, I thank you for indulging that that passion of mine. <laughs> Congrats. Way to go, Major. Thanks. As part of a tour of American military operations in northern Italy, American Ambassador Mr. Ronald Spoli visited Caserma Ederly today. The United States Army Garrison Vicenza Commander Colonel Virgil Williams gave the tour and provided the Ambassador with an overview of the post's operations, personnel and facilities. The Ambassador took special interest in the fact that Caserma Ederly is the number two employer for Italians in Vicenza, second only to the San Bartolo Regional Hospital. The Livorno High School is preparing to shut its doors for good. The closing is making some parents nervous. Specialist Nathan Acreage tells us school officials are reaching out to ease the transition. With the minutes ticking away before the scheduled closing of Livorno High School, parents are still raising concerns about the transition of the children to other schools. And there's not a place or a person that you can just go and ask a question. This is where the Student Advisory Council, or SAC, comes into play. Today we had a SAC, uh, School Advisory Council meeting just to pass out general information on the uh, closure of the school and to provide assistance to parents um, if they have questions during the transition just to try to make things go smoother for them. Carson feels the meeting was an opportunity to help parents understand policy making procedures. It would definitely give you a better perspective of how decisions are made or not necessarily decisions are made but the inputs that are coming from other parents other concerns that are shared. Carson understands that more questions may arise and wants parents to understand that the SAC is committed to helping them. We may not have all the answers, but we can contact someone and get an answer for you. School officials and parents have until June 2nd to come up with a plan for each high school student. Cam Darby, Italy. Specialist Nathan Acreage, AFN News. Cam Darby's final senior class graduates in June. The saying goes, you're a soldier 24 hours a day. It implies living the Army values every hour of the day. Commanders in Kaiserslautern, Germany, had that motto in mind when they plan their community safety day. They say they want to ensure soldiers are staying safe and making good decisions on and off the job. Here's Army Sergeant Steve Setkowski. 7th Army Reserve Command Safety Rodeo gave soldiers information on motorcycle safety, drinking and driving, fire safety, and child seat safety. This information gives soldiers all the necessary tools to stay safe on or off duty. Oh, this is absolutely wonderful. I, I will be talking about this to other soldiers and, and wives, especially uh, that have children. The information will be useful. Safety of soldiers is one of the most important issues in U.S. Army Europe. And the goal of this rodeo is to help prevent unnecessary injuries and deaths. I have designated safety our number one priority. I charge our safety officer with developing hands-on program to get everybody to see and feel what safety is all about. 7th Army Reserve Command plans to continue the rodeo every year. Army Sergeant Steve Satkowski, Kaiser Slaughter, Germany. You're about to leave for work. Maybe you've got kids who are getting ready for school. How is the weather going to affect your schedule and your kids? Are the roads safe to drive? As AFN's Tony McKinney tells us, the answers are as close as your radio. 
This is the scene every weekday morning at about 4.30 at the American Forces Network station in Vilsack. Today, the host of AFN Bavaria's morning show is Staff Sergeant Luke Burns. And what are the road conditions that you have? His show starts at 5 a.m., but he uses the time to get the latest weather, road, and school delay information. Staff Sergeant Burns says this is an important step in his morning routine because his listeners count on the information he gathers to start their day. Well, we have a lot of sources that we get information from. I mean, we have the Operations Center in Graf that covers Graf and Vilsec. We also have the Operations Center in Hohenfels uh, who gives us up-to-date information. You know, as soon as something changes in those communities, we get a phone call. Be careful out there because they're going to be amber all season. That still means there could be some patches of ice and snow. You know, you can't just look at the roads and make your own, your own assumptions about what the roads are like. I mean, you know, I get that information from the people that are out there driving the plows, the MPs that are on the beat, and, and they give you the, the accurate road conditions. And those closures are available on AFNEurope.net. A sampling of people there. in the area suggests that many know that AFN Radio is the place to turn for the latest road conditions and school delay or closure information. I usually listen to the radio, AFN, in the morning. Uh, AFN. Then you go to AFN Radio, right? AFN. AFN always has it come on, though. Um, AFN, road conditions on radio, they tell you. My NCO, but also the uh, radio station, and I got the phone number. AFN. 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 I just turn on AFN. And we got partly cloudy skies in the afternoon with some morning snow showers carrying on to tomorrow morning. In the two years Staff Sergeant Burns has been in Vilsack, he says it still surprises him how quickly the weather can change in this area and how important it is to know what the roads hold for you as you begin your commute to work. Well, that's going to do it for my time. Make sure you tune in from 3 to 6 on the afternoon mix. From Vilsack, I'm Tony McKinney, AFN News. You can get up-to-date road conditions and school delay or closure information where you live by tuning into your local AFN radio station. To find out the frequency, log on to our website, afneurope.net. It's time for some of our AFN affiliates to break away with their own local programming, but coming up, the latest is in. The Army has picked their favorite dining facilities, and we've got the list. Plus, meet a group of teenagers. They don't like tobacco, and they don't want you to like it either. We'll introduce you when we come back. You're watching the AFN Evening News. Magazine Online. Informative features. Back issues. Airman Extreme. Profiles. And related links. Airman Magazine Online. Log on today. Inside Afghanistan, a weekly in-country report with the latest on Operation Enduring Freedom, shown throughout the day, only on the Pentagon Channel. You could say things are really heating up in dining facilities throughout Europe. That's because there's a cooking competition, and the winners are in the spotlight tomorrow. It's all part of the Installation Management Agency Europe and U.S. Army Europe Philip Connolly Awards. The annual program recognizes excellence in Army food service. Here's a look at this year's winners. They're from Grafenwehr, Stuttgart, and Kaiserslautern, Germany. The three organizations go on to compete at the Department of the Army level and international contests. Congratulations to all. The special ceremony honoring the winners is set for tomorrow morning in Heidelberg. According to the Surgeon General, roughly 3,000 American kids start smoking every day. Of those new smokers, officials estimate one out of three will eventually die of a tobacco-related disease. Specialist David Harris reports that teens in Stuttgart are trying to get you to kick the habit. How many of you know people who smoke right now? <laughs> Inside a crowded classroom, the high schoolers present a skit involving Scooby-Doo that's designed to teach kids some negative aspects of smoking cigarettes. Can't breathe. Are you okay? I thought you must have forgotten how to inhale. Couldn't breathe. Don't know why. It's a mission that should be solved. Anastasia Glugowski, a student with Patch High School, 
explains the purpose of the teen's organization. This group is called Tattoo, Teens Against Tobacco Use, and what we do is uh, we get together and we study the research and statistics of tobacco users and smoking facts so that we can go around and let the community know the dangers of tobacco use. The fifth and sixth graders were attentive and responsive to the message brought by the teens. There was a question and answer session after the skit in which the students asked some pretty tough questions. How come sometimes people who don't smoke die, but people who smoke sometimes don't even get sick? The teens giving the presentation, as well as the kids they were teaching, each have rather personal reasons for not wanting to smoke. Well, my uncle Mike smokes, and I don't want him to smoke either, because that will only make him die, and I love him very, very much. I'm involved in this because I have so many friends that smoke, and I like to be involved with the school and spread the word about how bad tobacco is, and you shouldn't do it. It kills you. It's bad. I've never really wanted to smoke. Um, it's just, it looks horrible, and it makes people smell bad, and it's not cool. People may think it is, but it's just not. The teenagers here today with Tattoo aren't simply doing this to get credit for volunteering. They're here because they care enough to invest their time in the future and health of their younger peers. Booby dooby doo, a mystery song. From Robinson Barracks in Stuttgart, Germany, Specialist David Harris, AFN News. It's time again for some of our affiliates to take over with their own local programming, but for those of you staying with us, we've got the Nutcracker. It's not Broadway, but you don't want to miss it right after this break. Welcome to OIF Today, your source for the latest news on Operation Iraqi Freedom. The Iraqi government took control of its borders. The ministries of defense and interior took the lead in securing their national borders from U.S. forces at a ceremony near the Syrian border town of Husayba. By protecting the borders, Iraqi officials said they hope to stop the flow of terrorists and foreign fighters into the country. Coalition forces will continue to provide support until Iraqi forces can control all ports of entry on their own. Finally, 10th Mountain Division soldiers rescued two victims of a kidnapping during a vehicle search in western Baghdad. Troops at a military checkpoint found two Iraqi civilians bound and gagged in the trunk of a car. The individuals were employees for an American contractor. The driver of the car and a passenger had fake police IDs. Both men are in custody and the victims were released. in Livorno, Italy are bringing in the holiday season with their annual Christmas tree lighting. Specialist Kaya Fliega reports it's an event linking Americans with their Italian counterparts. Thanks to all the different organizations that are, uh, that are here uh, ready to... Right after Thanksgiving, the assault of Christmas merchandise begins. But the Christmas season at Camp Darby kicked off with the annual tree lighting event at Freedom Square. The tree was more than 30 feet tall, donated by the province of Pistoia. Children treated the audience to renditions of classic holiday music. As Italians and Americans took the chance to celebrate the spirit of the season. It gives us all an opportunity to thank the Lord for the day that we have together to share this moment. But it also brings together the community as well. The, the, the community of Pisa and Camp Darby. The event shows just how great things can be when people come together. Camp Darby, Italy. Specialist Kyle Flieger, AFN News. It's almost always a great moment when one of your children is spotlighted, whether it's the school play or a sporting event. In Turkey, one mother was watching her son from a different angle. She was on stage with him. Airman Alex Griffin has the story. Angelic Air Base's dance group held its rendition of the classic Christmas ballet, The Nutcracker. For director slash dancer, First Lieutenant Sabra Bryant, it's about spreading her love of art and dance. Very important for children to experience culture, and especially at an early age. And I think that that's the most important thing I wanna, I wanna display here. So much, in fact, she was able to convince her son to play the lead. And although the Nutcracker is a cultural classic, boys will still be boys. What's been your favorite part about this? Fighting the mouse queen and killing her. Lieutenant Brian is happy just to give kids the opportunity to dance, and hopefully with her son, grow to share her love of the art form. That was Airman Alex Griffin. 
Just a reminder, if you missed any portion of tonight's newscast, you can see it again on the Pentagon Channel just an hour later at 7.30 and again at 12.30. It'll also air again tomorrow morning at 7.30 and in the afternoon at 12.30. You can now watch your favorite morning and evening news watch radio anchors on television. Just tune into the AFN Program Guide channel weekday mornings from 6 to 9 and in the evenings from 4 to 5.30. That's all the time.